Hi there. Today is all about the championship. We are picking our team of the season so far, 2023-24, and I'm joined by Sky Sports' answer to Ryland Clark and David <laughs> Pratton. Pratts, hi. How are you? Are you, do you like a little it's, vodcast room? I think it's amazing. And how have you found the season so far? Are you enjoying it? Uh, I am. It's been terrific fun. It's always a shame when there's such a quick international break. But of mm. course, Leagues 1 and 2 carry on. Of course. But it's been great. that We've seen some cracking games, uh, none more so than the most recent one uh, up at the Steady Malight, which was an absolute coupon buster. So mm. five Southampton nil. Yeah. But so far, it's been thoroughly lovely and it doesn't feel like we had a break does it no not at all and <laughs> i mean so it is international break now it's given us a little bit of a chance mm. to stop and reflect on what has happened so far five games in it's very early yes to be picking a team this season so far but what is modern football if not knee-jerk reactions to Correct. things that have just happened mm -hmm. so we are going to pick as i've said our team this season so far it's going to be in a 4-3-3 formation it's all based on who scored data it's all been sort of mined it's all been stipulated it's all this that and the other it's all been number crunched number crunched yes exactly the only stipulation is that they have to have played at least 300 minutes okay this season so far which, which does is, rule out a few people which just is, over three games just over three games <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's a proper 4 3 3. We're doing it. So there's going to be no centre backs at right back. There's going okay. to be no strikers bunged out wide just to get them in. There's going okay. to be no midfielders in goal. It's going to be a proper functioning side. We start with our agreed selections. There are four standout names that okay. are going to have to make the team. It's Liam Lindsay of Preston at centre back, Gabriel Sara mm -hmm. in midfield, Norwich, Keenan Dewsbury Hall alongside him, and Morgan Whitaker on the right wing. Those are our four. Mm -hmm names that we we can't even really debate because they've all been absolutely okay. brilliant in their respective positions but in terms of our discussion should we call it <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's start in goal and we'll start with um i mean a name i wasn't expecting to say a few weeks ago asmir begovic mm. of qpr i mean they got mauled on the open day at watford didn't they Did. four nil since then he's been excellent qpr picked up two wins or the other option is possibly is vaslav hladky of ipswich yes um a name i've been practicing about three or four <laughs> times today how to say their who scored rating is separated only by a shoestring. Asmir Begovic, what? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Weird way of saying shoestring. No, no, no. I mean, on a sh I understand the term on a shoestring. I don't un understand the term separated by a you shoestring. You separated by a shoestring. If, if you want to make two things, sayings <laughs> morph into one, then yeah, I'm We're going with to it do that. Separated yeah. by a shoestring. Okay. Asmir Begovic has made more saves than any other goalkeeper in the championship this season on 23. Okay. Hadke has kept two clean sheets, which is... No other goalkeeper so far okay. has saved more, which I mean, two's not amazing, but yeah. I mean, Ipswich have been very good so far this season. Who do you think? Who, do, who have you been most impressed by at the two? The the point made about Begovic that he's been busy is that mm. a good thing? I mean, it reflects badly on his defence, but very much so. Yeah, um, there have been some clean sheets in there. I mean, they they just won two 0 at Middlesbrough. No yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm f not for one second. Um, denigrating what they've done in the, with, with the results. I mean, if you want to go and tell Asmir Begovic to his face, he's quite he's, big, isn't he? Yeah, he's a quite he's big. big man. Doesn't um, be far from here either. Doesn't he? Is he? Well, I suppose if he's at QPR, exactly. is he? Uh, is he's just down the road? Exactly. Um, I think, given how good Kladke was, and the fact that we, when we looked at that first game of the season against Sunderland, and he has obviously come into the team. He's been there a long time, but his his minutes in between the sticks in the championship for. Um, Ipswich are absolutely minimal but mm. as you say so far so good and with Begovic vastly experienced goalkeeper in a QPR side that staggered towards the end of last season and looked a little bit shaky at the start of this to pull that around and to be I mean they might only, they might be 17th but they're not too far away from the top six of course just four points mm. um, I, I think yeah, I think if you're pulling out that type of data, then it's quite hard to distinguish between the two, isn't it? So who are we picking as our goalkeeper in the team of the season so far? We're going to go for Asmir Begovic. Interesting. If that is okay with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Good, good, good. And I, I, I think he's going to be, obviously so far, he needed a bright start, but whether that is enough for him in his particular position to get QPR up and anywhere near the playoffs coming into the season, time will tell. Mm. Let's move on to right back now mm. then. We've got two choices for you. First of all, shout out to Ethan Laird of Birmingham, who was brilliant in the first couple of games of the season and had by far the highest who scored rating out of anyone in that position. Yeah. But he hasn't played enough games because he's been injured for the okay. last couple. So we're talking about Brad Potts of Preston. Yes. Or Louis Coyle of Hull City. Hull City, very impressive so far this season. Of course, won at Leicester on yeah. Saturday. Preston, 
top of the league. We're going to talk about them quite a lot. So mm. let's focus on Hull for now because Coyle's been excellent so far, hasn't he? He has, and he's he's one of the ones that you think Liam would lean on more towards uh, off the back of taking over and going into this season to have that experience, to have that consistency. He's certainly done that so far. He's been part of the furniture hall for a little bit of time now. Mm. Um and the first thing that Liam needed to do when he went in there was to show up the defence. He did exactly that. They were a little bit toothless going forward, considering the Tigers. That's not something that you'd put together with them. Nice. Um, but it's quite obviously shown the work that they've done over the course of, of the pre off season, pre season, going into the season has been superb. And that win against Leicester, the first team to do so this season, is a bit of a statement. And, and Louis played his part in that defensive rear guard as, as much as anyone else. Mm. And obviously. Preston has been brilliant. Mm. Brad Potts has been brilliant. He's probably a bit better defensively than Louis Coyle, Luke, or maybe a bit more energy, a bit more excitement going yes. forward potentially. But I mean, we're going to talk about Preston a lot, so maybe I'm going to I'm going to nudge you potentially in a direction of who to pick here. But yeah. it's obviously totally up to you at the same time. <laughs> so who are you picking, Louis Coyle or Brad Potts, as your right back? I'm going to go um, not just because geographically it's obviously a place close to my heart's horse. Uh, I'm going to go for Louis Coyle. Let's move on to our centre-backs now. We've got four to choose from. In fact, we've got three to choose from because one is set in stone, as we said. Liam Lindsay. He's okay. made the most clearances of any player in the Championship this season with 35. He's been brilliant at the mm -hmm. heart of that press and defence. He is there, set in stone. I had another name that I was going to put in, guaranteed, but obviously he had a bit of a, a, bit of a difficult game at the weekend. Well. Wesley Hood, a uh, hilarious own goal. It wasn't really his <laughs> fault. I'm mainly bringing it up because I just want to show the own goal again because it was it was it was brilliant. Poor poor bloke, it wasn't really intentional. <laughs> uh, he didn't mean it, but it just it happens in football. Oh, we've got know, he didn't mean so, it. <laughs> <laughs> very good point. Yeah, he is up against for our second centre back mm. slot, Liam Lindsay and Jordan Story, both also of Preston. They've been exceptional. Can we break up, pick two of those three Preston defenders, or do you fancy a bit of Wesley? Um, I th I think yeah, it's a little bit. Um, Mean, but in a funny way, that the fact that you've shot you've shot that in for Wesley because <laughs> obviously he's, he's a very talented defender. Mm. Um, and you were right when we talked about Louis Coyle and the potential for Brad Potts to be in that similar position as well, that we could quite easily go with the team that's at the top of the league and talk about how good yeah. their defence is. But I think with Liam, as you say, and Jordan, two very, very good, dependable players for Ryan Lowe. It's funny because I was, I, was, I was texting with him just the other day and getting a bit carried away with him being where they are mm. and he's very much obviously playing it down but he's going to have to rely on people like Lee and people like Jordan to make sure that that remains as it is pressed on top of the tree so for now, how are we going? Are we going in the Watford direction or are we building our Preston centre-back partnership? We we can't go all Preston, can we? I mean, this, the people of Preston probably would. So we'll go Liam Lindsay and we'll go Wesley Hoot. On to our left back now to complete our back four. Two more options for you for this position. We've got mm. Leif Davis of Ipswich, yeah. Callum Doyle of Leicester. We've got Davis, who's attackingly brilliant from that position. He's made more key passes than any defender Love it. so far this season. Whereas Doyle, the other way, has made more tackles than any defender so far this season. Both impressive start of the season. Ipswich have obviously have been fantastic yeah. in coming up from League One. Leicester rebuilding again from their Premier League days. Mm -hmm. Brought in Callum Doyle. He's also been excellent. Who's impressed you most out of the two? I, I think very much kudos to what Kieran's done at, at Ipswich and Leaf being a, a, a part of that so far this season. Um, as you say, the, the very kind of reflection of the modern fullback. Can we call it modern? I mean, it's about 15 years we've expected I think it's fullbacks technically to get modern forward. fullback. I think the modern fullback is now the inverted fullback. Yeah, a, a modern fullback is a holding midfielder. Yeah. <laughs> um, and with what Callum's done in a team where there's a lot of presumption that they should be up and away uh, the best team in the division, but Hull City has showed that they are beatable. Um, but I think Leaf coming into this division with Ipswich and the way Ipswich have adapted so well thus far, I would lean towards our tractor boy. Mm. So, I mean, it almost sounds like you made a decision, but I'm going to have to ask you anyway. Leaf Davis or Callum Doyle, who is the left back in our championship team of the season so far? Leaf Davis. On to our midfield trio now. This is a bit more straightforward for you because two of the names have just sort of stood out all season. So far, Gabriel Saar of Norwich City, Keenan and Dewsbury Hall of Leicester City, they've both just been exceptional. Mm -hmm. In terms of who scored ratings, they're both sort of miles away from their competition. Gabriel Saar, most key passes in the league. He also ranks highly for tackles. He's scored one. He's got two assists. 
Dewsbury Hall obviously made such an impression on that opening day win against Coventry was mm -hmm. stuck in the brain. But I mean, he hasn't quite produced the level of sort of goals since then. He hasn't scored since opening day, but in terms of performance, he hasn't mm. really dipped off. And that is obviously what we have to remember as well. Yeah. We need one more to join them from our short list of four. I'll give you Ozan Tufan of Hull City, mm. Christian Bielik of Birmingham, Pierre Equa of Sunderland and Aaron Ramsey of Cardiff City. I'm also going to shout out Charlie Patino, who has three assists since he's joined Swansea, but he hasn't got enough minutes so far to make this team, unfortunately. Maybe we'll be talking about him next time we do this. Yes. But for now, who is joining us in midfield for in terms of next to Gabriel, Sara and Keenan Jusby Hall. Are we going a Ugh. bit more defensive or a bit more attacking in our choice? What are we doing here? Uh, well, first, firstly, the two that you mentioned have been fantastic, as you mm. say, Keenan Jusby Hall set his standards very high the first couple of games of the season and I think they'll be very glad that obviously the transfer window is shut so he's not going to go anywhere. Sorry. Gabby Sara has got the potential to be one of, if not the best player in the Championship this season. I know a couple Big of coaches job. down at Norwich City who think that he's... Uh, 30 to 40 million pound footballer in the making. Um, so time will tell with that. One third of a Moises Caicedo then. Not yes. Is he's, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's the, he's the, he's, he's from the thighs down worth Moises Caicedo. That is definitely his best part. Not the middle, not the midriff no. or the top bit. Um, so then the rest of it, I saw Pierre Equa in the flesh at Sunderland and he was very, very good. Tony Mowbray wants him to be more aggressive, which um, is a challenge that's been laid down. I was on two fan. I've, I've always liked since he walked through the Dortmund City and obviously with his ability to score goals, he could be a very good part of that three. Christian Bielik seems to be a name that's been around for such a long period of time that when we chucked it in as a midfielder, having seen him play right at the back, a little bit further forward and defensive midfield where he is now, is soon I like very much. And then you mentioned Aaron Ramsey. Rambo going back to Cardiff. Seems happy there. The romance uh, to the whole, whole mm. thing, I think, appeals to us all. But you want me to pick between the four people that I've just mentioned. Do you know what? I'm going to go for Ozan Tufan. He's gone attacking. I have. Do you know why? Because I was not an attacking midfielder. <laughs> <Pure> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't really know what it was. All this who scored stuff would have killed me because yeah. if you're talking about key passes, effects on the game in a positive way and ability to assist or score goals, I'd have been nowhere near it. I don't think they had shin kicking <laughs> as a metric, unfortunately. <laughs> we move on to our front three now and we start with our nailed on choice for right wing. It's Plymouth Argyles, Morgan Whitaker. He's got the second most dribbles in the league this season with 12. He has one goal. He has three assists. No one has more assists <laughs> I don't know what I've said yeah. that. <laughs> I mean you've, you've stated a fact a statistical fact and then backed it up yeah. with the same thing yeah. but in a sentence I'm uh, telling you no one's had more assists <laughs> should we just leave that in definitely yeah. leave that in the best uh, fact you've chucked <laughs> out in all the time that I've known you uh, <laughs> top of the assists so literally no one has more assists eight years and that's the best thing I've ever told him <laughs> uh, so yeah Mitt yeah, Whittaker well. He's, he's been fantastic. Yes. Uh, left wing, until probably the weekend just gone, Jonathan Rowe, the standout name. Yes. Uh, been brilliant for Norwich so Superb. far. He's one of the breakout stars in the league so far, but just up right behind him, Nathan Broadhead, Ipswich Town, also been fantastic in that league. He's created the most chances of any wide man so far with four. He also has a three goals and an assist this season. It's a tough choice now, isn't it? Yeah. Us? If, I, if we're doing this, we're doing this just after the weekend's games. If we were talking about this four or five days ago, yeah. Jonathan Rowe being big bold letters. He has on been my piece superb of paper in front of me, but Broadhead, one of their own as well, which we always exactly like. yeah. great to see. Broadhead has been good though. So this is a tough choice for you, isn't it? Uh, it is. Mm. Uh, I mean, yeah, tough in the I sense mean, in of, the grand scheme. Of yeah, things, I mean, yeah. professionally, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's not like fine. making mortgage providers. No, it's not, it's, or yeah. <laughs> or kind of who to throw in a lifeboat. No, but um, no, I think I've, having seen Jonathan, he, he he's been fantastic, as you say. That that kind of upset I mean that with the greatest respect when you look at a team in Rotherham in 20th and where Norwich deem themselves to be um, in the shake up then that is a bit of an upset um, but you can't having seen Nathan and, and what it was like on the opening day the season that he's had so far dovetailing into the players that we talked about at Ipswich he's done very very well indeed um, and Morgan at Plymouth really like Plymouth there's a uh, Plymouth Argyle sorry but the um, that consensus Almost sounds a little bit condescending now when we talk about Argyle being all right. I think mm. we'll be better than all right this season. They'll 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 certainly be up in the top half. Um, so yeah, so I, I really like those two in a four three three. I can't disagree with that. I'd go Broadhead over Row marginally for you. Thank you. I appreciate.
appreciate it. <laughs> just <laughs> if you're you. just doing it for me, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank just you. Just for you. Now we move on to our number nine, our striker, the highest ranking striker in the league, technically over 300 minutes played. Because obviously, a shout out again to Josh Sargent, who yes. probably would have been in this team if he played enough minutes. He's been brilliant. Unfortunately, injured at the moment because he had started the season so well. How long is he out for doing now? Months is, is what it? David Ragnar said not too long ago, which is a shame because he had yeah. started the nice season in well. excellent yeah. form. Yeah. Uh, but Al... Not, not saying that if he's horrible. No, if he's horrible, him. he deserves to be injured. Yeah. Uh, Al... <laughs> Our best striker so far, yep. ranking-wise, has been Brandon Thomas Asante. I'm putting a caveat here. I'm taking a bit of creative license because he scored a goal that shouldn't have been a goal, and that's okay. put him top. So I'm going to actually give you two other choices. Instead. Okay. Sorry, who scored? Sorry, metric lovers everywhere. I'm using my control, my power, my EFL assertion here to instead give you a choice between Liam Delap or Will Keane. So that's Ooh. Hull City's number nine who's been yeah. excellent so far on loan from Manchester City or Keane who has joined Preston and been a revelation for the team at the top of the league yeah. right now as we speak it would it would be needlessly churlish of me to lean too far towards a team that has done very well but aren't top like you say talking about trying to be a bit too clever with it and you know me never not knowingly clever mm. and any of this particular thing but I think given what we've seen from Will so far in a side that's done brilliantly well to go into the national break, uh, international break, top of the tree. I'm leaning instantly more towards that. Liam's done. Liam's been fantastic. Needed to do something, didn't he? Coming away from Stoke and um, that was certainly all that kind of makeup at Stoke City it wasn't really conducive to get the best out of him or the team as a whole. Um, so this fresh start really has kicked him on, scoring the winner as well at the weekend. So it's going to be a huge boost for him. But I am leaning toward. Nay, choosing Will Keane. Very well. That is our team then. So this is our 11. We've picked our championship team of the season so far, 23-24. We have QPRs, Azmir Begovic in goal. Our back four is Hull City's Louis Coyle at right back, Liam Lindsay of Preston and Watford's Wesley Hood at centre back, Ipswich Town's Leif Davis at left back, our midfield Three, Norwich City's Gabriel Sara, Leicester City's Keenan Dewsbury Hall and Hull City's Ozan Tufan. Our front three, Plymouth Argyle's Morgan Whitaker, Ipswich Town's Nathan Broadhead and up top Preston North End's Will Keane. And for them, of course, we need a manager. There's only one name so far, isn't there, realistically? I mean, again, a week ago, it might have been a yeah. different name, but right now, top of the league, it has to be Ryan Lowe, doesn't it? Yes, and you've got to mention, obviously, in dispatches, uh, Kieran McKenna with what he's done um, but knowing Ryan like I do he'll be happy as a pig in whatever with regards to how they've <laughs> gone so far and his aspirations as we saw last season is is about getting that side at least into the playoffs a, a small portion has gone they've done okay he'll be very very happy but uh, Enzo Maresca as well a, a manager that we didn't know too much about has guided Leicester to uh, third position and was perfect of course until the whole City game so plenty to look at I'm looking down the list there John Eustace is another one that would jump out as well but by virtue of where we are at this first international break Simeon I'm totally in agreement with you that Ryan Lowe has been the best so far 